Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, welcome to the Spring Conference Educational Session New Member Orientation. Before we begin, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping rules. Please turn off all cell phones or place them on silent if you haven't already done so. Please sign the sign-in sheet that's going around. The end of the session, please remember to complete the evaluation form. Each of you should have had that along with the handout from Jack. It'll be collected at the end of the session. The presentation will be 30 to 35 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes for question and answers. Five minutes prior to the session ends, we'll collect the evaluation forms and the sign-up sheet. Now, to introduce our speaker, Jack Chalabian. If you've ever struggled to get a new member oriented in Toastmasters, you know the challenges of engaging and encouraging new members. Jack Talabian, DTM, has felt the same struggle and over his years in Toastmasters has learned key strategies how for engaging new members. In his presentation, you will learn these key strategies that make membership dreams come true. To introduce Jack Chalabian. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'll probably ask you. New member orientation. What is this like? Going back to school? <laughs> We're not going back to school. Let me ask a poll the audience. How many of you have had a difficult or challenging time getting new members to get started? About a quarter of you. Let me ask you another question. When they got started, did they fall off at some point? Yes. 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 I'm going to share some ideas with you on how to help your new member get started, but also to help your member continue the process of the Toastmaster educational program. There's going to be three strategies I'm going to share with you. We'll get to those momentarily. By a pull of hands in the audience, how, of who's been a member of Toastmaster five years or longer? Outstanding. And who's been a Toastmaster between like one year and five years? And who's been like a brand newbie, less than a year? All right, good, good stuff. Anyone been here like 30 days or less? We got some new members. Congratulations. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> So when I got started back in 2010, they just like threw me right into the hopper. I had no idea what to do. To be quite honest, I was scared. But what I learned was sometimes you have to, in order to grow, you have to get uncomfortable. My mentor always shared this with me all the time. You have to get out of your comfort zone in order to grow. So the very first thing what I did was I wanted to think about why I was I here? What, what brought me to Toastmasters? Well, the club that I got started with was my corporate club, the CTA Toastmasters. And it was almost by someone had literally dragged me to get to the first meeting. And then I was asking myself, well, how does it benefit me? Have you felt the same way? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So what I really want you to start to think about is understanding the why. Why did you show up? Do you remember when you showed up? Why did you, sh why did you go to the, your very first Toastmasters meeting, man? Because I wanted to know what it was about and see how it could help me and you know, afford me better success in speaking. And you, sir? Me? Yes, sir. I was in management where I was required to address larger groups of people. I had some experience in doing it. <clears throat> and you, ma'am? Uh, can you repeat your question, please? Why did you show up to your very first Toastmasters meeting? Because I love uh, what this is about, and I want to try it on my own and see could I be a part of it, and so that's why I showed up. Do you see in each of one? Of the individuals who answered that question, the answer did not come from here, mm -hmm. it came from here. Mm -hmm. My mentor always says, 
Passion plus power equals purpose. Ooh, now think about that. It's easy to get started, right? You go to a club, you want, you're in the club for an hour, two hours. Some clubs are like three hours. God bless them. <laughs> and then at the end they ask, are you ready to be a part of Toastmasters? And you're kind of like shaky, right? I was shaky at first. I was like, I don't know. Okay. You know. Do I have to like, give you a check, cash? What? There's really not a process. It's like they ask you and then you go, yes or no. Right. Sometimes you might have you members or guests that will show up two, three, four, five. I had a guest in our club that showed up to our, our, my community club eight times before they showed up. They signed on the dotted line. Wow. And you know the thing about it is, is we kept on asking, well, why are you showing up? What is bringing you back as a guest? One, two, three, four, five, eight times. And the answer was, it's really fun in here. <laughs> it's like not hostile. I really enjoy it. It feels like a family. We have work-life balances all the time. We go to work. And it's us versus them. It's this group versus that group. Toastmasters, it's different. Your new member is looking for some spark. This is where understanding the why. Dig past the questions. You might have to sort through your potential guest and even your new member, why they're doing this. I was just hearing a conversation about Massachusetts. Two individuals that never met each other. And they had an engaging conversation. This is what Toastmasters bring to you. <clears throat> I really want to start to think about helping your new member with their dream. When I got started, I was scared. It took me two months before I gave my icebreaker speech. I really wanted to jump in the hover, but I had no idea what to do. No one was showing me how to become a Toastmaster. It wasn't until my sixth speech that I was introduced to my speech coach and my speech mentor. And that's when really things started to take off. But this is like seven months later. So if you're getting started and you're scared, it's okay. It's your subconscious telling you, don't screw it up. Don't mess it up. You have to look at you. There's a bunch of people in front of you. Don't screw it up. It's all right. For those who are established, been around for a while, you have an opportunity to share your experiences as being a Toastmaster. Your years of service. And at some point, you're going to give back. We all win at the end of the day. Let me transition to the second module point, and that's developing the dream. I handed out the new member profile. Did everyone receive a copy? If you don't give your new member an opportunity for some purpose, how the heck are they going to track the Toastmaster program? How are they going to pursue? Think about it this way. Everyone got to this hotel this morning, yes? Yes. Some of you used a GPS. No. Some of you decided not to use the GPS. And you circled around. No one got lost, right? Because you had a plan in mind. Why is Toastmasters any different? Why is our new members not being oriented? Orient them. Use the new member profile. In cases where I've sat down with members one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one, -on -one, I will email them a PDF copy of this new member profile. And I will ask them to fill it out. Because I, not only do I want to understand their why, I want to create 
and develop their dream. So I'll have them fill it out. Now sometimes you're going to have members that are going to look at this and I don't know how to. Like, what would you describe your current skill level as a speaker? You might have members that do that, and that's okay. If you're a vice president of education or membership, or you're a mentor to one of the new members, this is your opportunity to help them guide through this new member profile to develop their and create their dream. They came here for a reason. Now you have to present some purpose for the, and give them the guidance and navigate them to the next level. So when we sit down, my mentee, I have them fill that out. And then I also have them bring their competent communicator and leadership manuals. Have you seen these manuals before? Yes. yes. Have you opened them up? Yes. 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 Have you used them? Yes. See, everyone's used them in this room. This is the beginning of your Toastmaster career, these two manuals. So when I'm sitting down, I usually buy them a cup of coffee or tea if they don't like coffee. And we're going to go over creating their dream. They got here, now we have to develop it. Let's work through it. So, you're, so when I ask a new member, like, have you gone through this manual? <coughs> and I see, like, deers in the headlight. <coughs> they have no idea. Your new member doesn't know what they don't know. And that's all right. As a mentor, as an executive member of the club, or a senior member of the club, is your, I think it's your obligation to help your new member through. Remember, we want to retain members as much as recruit new members. And if you do this correctly, your new members are going to stick around for a while. We have members that have been around for longer than five years. I think when you do that, you benefit both, both sides benefit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Benefit, and your other person benefits as well. And what this does is it really it creates a relationship. You're building a family instead of just going to a club. Gene Pellegrini is in my club. He's seen the rise and the fall. It's the gentleman in the back, the yellow tie, Gene, I guess, like mine, Cinco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, wife, my wife picked this out for me. Outstanding. She should be wearing a tie because I'm over 15 years old. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding. So when I sit down, I open up the manual, and I, and I essentially go down the projects. Now, I don't specifically go into detail of what the projects. Do you know how long that would take if I had to go through this manual? <coughs> Do you imagine if you had to do it, if you were sitting on the other end? Just go an overview, an overview of the projects. Give them an idea of what is being expected out of you. If you, if you don't do this, that's fine. They're going to go home clueless. But if you do do this, they're going to have, you're going to raise their level of expectation that this is just not a speaking club. It's a club that you're also going to foster your leadership skills as well. And same is true with a common communicator. See, mine's pretty beat up, so I use a lot. But what I encourage each of my new members is you came here for a reason, and I'm here to help you build your skills. So, I encourage them to give their icebreaker speech, not wait two months like I did. I don't want them to have the pitfalls that I had experienced. And I share that experience with my new members because it set me back clearly six months. I had a member last year who got started. We went through this program, decided I want to give a speech. They're always record speech. And what, we went through a, a program of how to get the idea out of their brain and on a piece of paper. And within 30 days, <coughs> gave their icebreaker speech. Within three months, they gave four more speeches. Wow. They're on the fast track. They're close to finishing their CC, and this is under a year. 
or come to communicator. Daniel. I didn't have to do anything. I just took their why, placed it right here, and said, are you ready to get started? And they were like, yeah, I'm ready to get started. Well, the proof is in the pudding. Members are coming here, coming to your club on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Your guests are coming here because they want to improve their skill set. Now you have to create the dream. The dream is to become better at what they were not doing before. And if you start to think about it on those, at that level, that's when you're going to see membership retention. And new members really start to orient and understand what Toastmasters offers to them. Now, I had reference about helping one of my club members get started. We used a technique that I learned about four years ago when I came to a spring or fall conference, I don't remember. It was essentially was I asked a new member after we went through, going through the manuals, and we talked about their why, after I had encouraged them to give their icebreaker speech, I always get the deers in the headlight look. You remember when you gave your icebreaker speech? Mm -hmm. yes. Was it really hard? Yes. Yeah. It's really hard. It was hard for me. I had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> I just went up there, wrote a speech, and I didn't even think it was good. <coughs> and I got a standing round of ovation. I didn't even know that was even possible. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I said, okay, we're going to sit down after we're done with this. Let's sit down and create your outline. And I was like, I'm not going to create it for you, but we're at least going to get the ideas out of your brain and put them on a piece of paper. And so it's the circle technique. I don't want to go into really into details with this, but essentially what you're going to, if you're sitting down with a new member, and this could happen in your speech, second speech, third speech, I still do it today. I know I've got I know, scores and scores of speeches under my belt. I still do the same technique because it works. It's proven. I asked a member, so, I'm sorry, your name? Roxanne. Roxanne. What I want you to do is pull out a piece of paper. We're going to, we're going to use Roxanne as a, our guinea pig. <laughs> Roxanne, in the middle of the piece of paper, I want you to draw a big circle. Big circle, because you're going to write in the middle of the circle. Okay. The very first idea that comes to your head, write it down. The second idea, I want you to write another, a line outside that first circle and another smaller circle. Right, put another circle outside the first sphere. The first idea that came from that first idea, write the second idea on the second sphere. And that's exactly what I do. And from there, we're creating a, a bunch of ideas that scatter brain out there mm -hmm. and putting them in a structure. And then from there, after Roxanne would have finished this, it would be like a one to two to three minute drill. I would say, Roxanne, tell me about the story about the circles that you just drew. And it's typically, it's, uh, what I ask is, talk about yourself, because it's easy to talk about yourself, right? Roxanne, you can talk about yourself all day? All day long. All day long, exactly. See how easy that was? Absolutely. Roxanne, tell, can you, can you share with the group of, of a little bit about yourself? 15 seconds, 30 my, seconds. My name is Roxanne Wilkening. I'm from Gurney, Illinois. I'm a part of the Daniel Wright Toastmasters. I started in like, August of last year. See, outstanding. Good job. <laughs> From there, I will ask the member to take all those ideas and put them in an outline form. And then I'm going to follow up at a later date before she, she in the case of Roxanne, can you give her icebreaker speech? way to get her started as a new member. You're create look, the new member has all this fire belly of excitement because they're now a Toastmaster. Use it to your advantage. Use it to your new member's advantage. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many members will stick around <coughs> after the first increment of being a Toastmaster. So they signed up in April of this year, right? 
and they're going to be real excited, and they continue to get excited and give speeches and take on functionary roles and be a part of your club because it's now no longer just being a club, it's about having a fa second family. They're going to sign up back in October. <coughs> Matter of fact, you're going to have a problem because we, ha we faced this problem this year and previous year, and Gene can certainly share that with you at the end where people are fighting to get a speaking slot. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? If you were ever uh, vice president of education, did you ever have a problem filling like roles, especially speaking roles? Like, what? We're a Toastmaster, you're supposed to speak. That's how you get the momentum rolling. And it helps the new member become better, because now you've created their dream. Now I'm going to move to the last one. So let's let's recap here. We talked about understanding the dream, creating the dream. Now we have to check in on the dream. What does that really mean? Well, have you ever noticed any of your members? They started off strong. <laughs> And then they started to window away. Mm -hmm. That really stinks, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. you really are expecting a lot out of that member. You actually had more confidence in their in what they were doing and why they were doing this than maybe they were thought that that they did. So what I want you to start to think about is sometimes you have to be the accountability partner. It might take two, three, four, five existing Toastmasters to help that Toastmaster get back on their two feet. So these are some of the questions I, I always ask is, has your member changed their goals? Life gets in the way, doesn't it? That's a pretty good packed room, and yet there's what, 10,000 Toastmasters? I'm sure we've had much more than a handful of new Toastmasters in the last 30 days that signed up across District 30. As their members, goals change. Sometimes they do. Sometimes when they told you that they were going to give the icebreaker speech and 30 days later they got scared, they pulled out, they said, no, nah, can't do it, won't do it, I'm not doing it. It's okay. Remember, this is a volunteer army. Voluntary organization. You're, it's not your job to force it down their throat and say, you will be a Toastmaster or else. No, not at all. Your obligation as a Toastmaster is to encourage them to improve their speaking and leadership skills. <coughs> Mandate versus encouraging. Two different words. And I want you to start to think about that as you walk out of this session at the end. Something else to think about. Are they really looking to really improve their leadership skills? Or are they really looking to improve their speaking skills? Sometimes they don't balance out. What they may have wrote at their membership profile when you sat down with them at day one or day X may now be different because life has gotten in the way. Because I'm not so interested in doing Toastmasters like I was when I first got started. When I, got, when I was in Toastmasters about two years in, I had this imbalance issue. My mentor always suggested that you're going to hit a plateau at some point. And I felt the plateau pretty hard. I was giving a bunch of speeches and then I stopped. It was like I hit the brick wall and I didn't know what to do. But the great thing about checking in on your dream is my mentor had asked me, well, what do you really want to do with this? Engage my why again. Sometimes you have to do that. So if you're not being engaged, I would demand it. You pay 
Well, you, you know, you pay dues. Mm -hmm. This is your obligation as a Toastmaster to ask for greatness as much as your club is asking greatness for you. So when you're having to recalibrate the balance, sometimes you might have to focus on one thing versus the other. For me, I start focusing on the leadership track. Because I realize I'm not going to be giving any speeches. As a matter of fact, the speeches I was giving, in my mind, was pathetic. My evaluators were telling me I was doing a great job. In my mind, I was like, no, they're not great. So let me go concentrate on something else. Like maybe I can get some momentum back and then start to get the passion back in Toastmasters. And that's when I started to flip to the other side back to speaking. And went, okay, now I'm going to give some speeches. I need my mentor to help me out. I need my speech coach to really to work through the program. And in the last 18 months, from that point where I was in a plateau, I was able to complete the Toastmaster educational program. But it was because of my speech coach and mentor challenging me, checking in on my why, checking in on my dream. They called me out on that mess. They said, Jack, you wanted to become a distinguished Toastmaster, didn't you? That stinks when someone calls you out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like fighting words. That's Chicago. You don't call anyone a punk on the street. That's what my speech coach and speech mentor did to me. And that was enough juice, it was enough fire to get me to the next level. I employed the same technique. I have currently in my community club our president and vice president of education. I challenged them a year ago, a year ago from Right now, do you want to become better speakers? And hands down, they said yes. I said, you remember the conversation we had back in 2013? 2014, I'm sorry, 2014. Remember the conversation we had? They were like, yes. You remember you wanted to become better speakers, better leaders? They are like, yes. We need some new officers. Are you ready to step up? Exactly, cricket, cricket, that's exactly what they said. <laughs> they know there's a lot of work involved being a Toastmaster, being an officer, <coughs> being a member. But you have to understand, in a year's time, they were tracking through the Common Communicator and Competent Leadership Manuals, respectively, the President and the Vice President of Education. They weren't doing both at the same time. They were elected. And now the club is doing, still doing very well because someone held them accountable and checked in on their dream. My president in my community club now completed his competent communicator, competent leader, advanced communicator, bronze, and he said, right, this is about checking in on the dream, that he wants to com complete his competent leadership bronze by June 30th. That's four words in less than two years. Wow. That's about holding people at a high standard. That's about checking in on their dream. Because I realized that I didn't have that kind of mentorship when I got started. And I realized once I hit this <coughs> DTM, Distinguished Toastmaster goal, that was my obligation to come back to help new members, never to crash, never to be lost in the storm. Just didn't want that. So it's great to see when people are rising from the ashes out of their fears and they start to see that the goals that they had written down when they first got started now are becoming the fruition of their dream. Well, let me recap here. We talked about understanding, right, the dream. Why are they here? Why are your members here? Ask that question. When they're guests, 
when they're signed on the dotted line and they actually pay your dues, ask them why. Why are you here? What do you want out of this? <coughs> Where do you see yourself in a year from now? Develop their dreams is the next one. You're going to have to sit down with your new member. Sit down with their new member. Have them fill out the new profile, membership profile. Sit down and have a conversation about the two manuals they're about to receive in the mail if they have not received already. Go through all the projects and not into detail, just an overview. Explain the educational program. <coughs> Take their why and ask them their why, why what they see what they're going to get out of Toastmasters based on their why. Encourage them to give them <coughs> their first icebreaker speech. Help them out. There's no manual of how to be a great speaker. Yes, I realize that there are a lot of individuals that will sell that to you. But there's no perfect manual out there. The last thing is Encourage them to engage in the educational program. And the last one is <coughs> checking in on the dream. See where they're at. Are their goals aligned from what they when they first got started are aligning today in the current condition? Are they meeting their goals? Are they getting value out of Toastmasters? That's one they hear all the time. Am I getting value out of this? Am I paying money? Am I getting value? Start to think about that. Think about when you were first being a Toastmaster and when you first got started and you went, oh my goodness, what am I supposed to get out of this? Think about your new member now. Put yourself in their shoes and ask them, are they getting what they are expecting to get out of this? See, the reason why you want to do all of these things is you want to help your new members, right? You want to help them get out of the block, become better at being a better speaker, a better leader. It helps with your club retention. You want to be a great club? You have to have members, both new and existing. And the existing members benefit from this as well. Your competent leadership says you have to mentor a new member or existing member the first three speeches. There's benefit on both sides of the aisle about creating balance. You know, Ethel go to use our district leader. You always ask to stretch. Have you ever heard of that? Stretch. Encourage your members, especially the new members. Have them stretch beyond measure. Get a little uncomfortable. You'd be surprised when you get uncomfortable how much growth is going to take place. You don't have to do it now. You could sit in place and not give a speech and not take on functionary roles and pay dues. And I've been in clubs where that exactly takes place. There are the spectators. From a vice president of membership and treasurer standpoint, love them. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably asking, well, well, do you love them? Yes. They're free members. They're paying dues and they're not doing anything. We'll take them any day of the week. We love spectators. And that doesn't mean that they're any less or more than the mavericks of your club or the ones that absolutely are not doing nothing at all or really, really sitting around and actually go away. They're equally as important. Lance Miller said you're going to have third, third, and third. For new members, you're going to fit in one of those three categories. It's really the question is, if you created your why, and you're developing your why, and now someone's checking in on your why, 
you're going to know which one you're going to fill in what slot. Look, if you don't do this, you know, they're going to still love you. <coughs> they might not. <coughs> and you're going to proceed at normal oper standing operating procedure. But if you do use all these techniques, you create their why, create their dream, create, develop their dream, and check in on their dream. I promise you this much, because I've seen it in action, not once, not twice, 15 times, in under a year and a half. They stay, they work, they engage, they play afterwards. Ooh. Play afterwards. That's right. Extra acti social activities outside of the normal club hours. They come to spring conferences like this one. You might create business relationships. You might create a personal relationship. It's a lot bigger if you employ and really start to ask this. I encourage you to go back to your clubs and begin to implore not just the mechanics of new member orientation, but really to start to strive and ask their dream. And if you do that, you'd be amazed what kind of progress you're going to see in your club also as a new member. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Could you give me your name again? Jack Chalabian. Thank you, Jack. Any other questions? There's another, usually there's two conferences, one in the fall and one in the springtime. And then there are a series of what they call Toastmaster Leadership Institutes, which have some educational sessions like this, but they're generally for the dignitaries to train, to like learn how to do an officer role. And those are twice or three times a year. There are sessions at the TLIs for everybody. Yes. And everybody's encouraged to attend the TLI. Maybe if you're thinking about an office, you can sit down in the officer training and learn about it. And don't forget the international convention also. And also in Washington, D.C. this year. And in a few years, it's going to be right here in Chicago. The Toastmaster Leadership Institute. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, when is the Chicago one? <laughs> I think it's um, in 2017. <laughs> it, it's not. It, it's it's coming up soon. I'm not sure of the year. Right. When, when is the DC one? This, this year. This year is on uh, August August 18th, I think. Yes. You can, if you want to get the additional information, go to uh, d30toastmasters.org, and they have all. Or go to toastmasters.org, which is TI's website. There's another question right there. Yes, yes. Um, I had a question about checking in on the dream because I don't want to be the person that's going and always kind of bugging them. How often would you just suggest going and at, you know asking where they are or reevaluating the goals? The, the way I would address this is this. Sometimes it's a little teaser responses or questions. I go, <clears throat> you're at speech number four. Can I hit the CC by June? Yeah. Oh, I see you haven't been to Toastmaster in a while. <coughs> you ready to step up? Yeah. It's May time. They need officers. You know it's hard to do that. You've been stepping up. You, you actually you were the contest chair for the speed, international speech and table topics contest. I think you'd be a great <coughs> vice president of membership. Yeah, well, teach Sometimes you actually have to sit down and actually get on the phone, but that's a that's time consuming. Right. I, look, I travel too much. I have a travel book. I, I, I'm just going all over the place. So when I go to my clubs, it's quick response. Boom, 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 boom. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to be me. Everyone has different personalities. You have to kind of like feel it out. So if you have a very emotional individual, uh, you might be emotional, sir. I don't know. 
Shaking and 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 shaking